American mid-action supercars are a rare thing, but those few that are out there are quite unique, and Mosler is one of them. Not just the car, but also the story and the man behind the car. So hello guys and welcome back to another video and here is the story of Mosler. After majoring for economics at the University of Connecticut, Warren Mosler managed to make millions in Wall Street, thanks to his hedge fund. But Warren isn't your typical Wall Street guy, he is a huge petrolhead, calling his love and passion for cars a disease. Saying in an interview with Car and Driver magazine, if they offered me a cure for it, I would probably have taken it. In weekends, Mosler would race with his Golf GTI, and on one of these races, he would meet a man by the name of Dick Respis. Respis promised Warren that he could build him a sub 400 kilo car based on a Golf GTI. Being a fan of the lightweight cars, Mosler decided to give this idea a try. But Respis never completed the project, only finishing the body of the car. This was a piece of body made out of composite materials. Mosler took the body and fitted a rotary engine from a Mazda, which was connected to a 5-speed gearbox from a Porsche 914. The final car weighed at around 750 kilos and proved to be quite impressive. And so Warren decided to go and create his own company. And in 1985, Mosler created Consulier Industries Incorporated, based in Florida. Differently from all the greats of the supercar world, which named their companies after their family name, Mosler decided to go for Consulier, which actually meant nothing, it was just a word that Warren had heard from his father when he was a child. Mosler created a qualified team, with composite material specialists and the racing drivers, in order to create his dream car. And in 1988, Consulier presented the GDP, which stood for Grand Touring Prototype, which was the name of the endurance racing championship back in the 80s in America. The car was very interesting and like nothing else on the road. The design followed the style of the original prototype. The problem was that Mosler didn't hire a designer. Plus, the budget was a bit limited, so like many others of the time, they used a number of parts from other cars. So, the car wasn't the prettiest car in the world. The interior on the other side was the typical interior of the time, with the same cheap materials that even some of the highest Euro exotics were using back then. But the important thing was what was underneath the car. First was the chassis. The GDP was quite ahead of its time, since became the first road car with no structural metal in the body. The body was made from a form of composite monocoque, made from Kevlar, fiberglass and carbon fiber, to which the steel subframes were mounted to the front and rear, and thanks to this the weight was at 900 kilos. But not only this, the GDP proved to be quite rigid, passing all the federal uh, certifications without hydraulic dampers under the bumpers. This also allowed Consulier to over the car in three different body styles, as a coupe, as a targa and as a speedster. For the engine, Mosler saw a number of options. The rotary engines of Mazda delivered good power, but they were too unreliable, while the big American V8s were just too heavy for such a lightweight car and so he decided to go for a 2.2 liter Kleiser Turbo 2. This was the same engine used on the Daytona Shelby Z, 
This was quite a good choice since the engine produced 175 horsepower and the spiffy Shelby name all the parts were built by Kleiser, which meant that everything was easily available. The gearbox also came from the Shelby Z, this being a 5-speed manual, and thanks to all this, the acceleration time was at 5.2 seconds while the top speed was at 240 km per hour. The GDP went up for sale in 1989 and had a base price of $46,000. There also was the LX version, which was at $55,000. The LX was the luxury version and came with Recaro seats, Alpine stereo system, power windows, cruise control and even with a car phone. After selling the first series around 70 cars, Consulier released the Series 2. The GDP received some stylistic changes but most importantly was the performance. The power of the Turbo 2 was raised at 190 horsepower, something that lowered the acceleration time to 5 seconds. There was also an option with the Turbo 3 engine, which had 220 horsepower. And in 1991, in a partnership with Carroll Shelby, Consulier released the C4, which came with 250 horsepower. This lowered acceleration to 3.9 seconds, something that made Mosler quite proud for his car, who told Auto Week magazine, We are confident that we have created the fastest car and most efficient production car that could surpass even the Ferrari F40, but engine from Mr. Shelby will make our cars even faster. Besides this, Mosler also started entering the GDP on different races. One of the most interesting one was the Nelson Legends 24 hour race. Now this wasn't a very important race but was enough for Consolier to make a name for themselves. They ended up winning 3 races in a row, 1988, 1989 and 1990, and after their 3rd win they were forbidden to participate in it. A similar thing happened when they entered IMSA Supercar Championship where the low weight gave them quite the advantage, so much that IMSA announced that Consulier had to head 300 kilos as a penalty, but by the end of the season they were banned completely from the championship. All this probably helped the Consulier name as the street racer. This also continued in 1989, when Consulier easily won the Rudder Truck Manufacture Challenge against the latest Corvette ZR1 and this gave Mosler the $25,000 challenge idea. He promised to pay $25 to anyone who could defeat the GDP with any production car. And so Car and Driver magazine published their test in October 1991, where the editors competed with each other with a Corvette and a Costelier GDP, and the vet won. Mosler refused to pay the money, arguing that car and driver was dishonest, and after this Warren organized a $100,000 challenge, where a GTP C4 with the street racer package raced against a Lamborghini Diablo, Porsche 911 Turbo, Honda NXX and a Mazda RX-7, and of course the GTP won. But the results were very questionable, so this mostly damaged the consular name. Meanwhile, the original chassis of the consulier had attracted a number of small manufacturers who were interested to convert the GTP into an electric sport car. The electric car was a small manufacturer based in California, and according to them, the converted GTP would have had an acceleration time of 7 seconds and a top speed of 160 km per hour, despite a weight of 1400 kilos. The car was even endorsed by Leslie Nielsen, who was a huge electric car fan, but never went beyond the prototype phase. Later, Mosler would sell the consulier name to electric car company, but before that he tried to apply the GDP principles on a number of different body styles. Like on a van, consulier used a monocoque made out of the same composite materials as the GDP and the body panels were made out of plastic, 
this gave the van a curb weight of 1100 kilos, something that not only increased the range but also the payload. There also was the commuter. Differently from most of the small city cars of the past, the commuter was quite weird, not only because of the materials used and the electric powertrain, but also because that the car could sit forward which all sat on the front seat in a row. Warren tried to sell the idea to the big three, but with no success. And this would be the last for the consular industries. And in 1993, Warren founded Mosler Automotive, which would become an even crazier adventure than the consular. But that's a story for another time. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.